the What to Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Fallon. Welcome to What to Next podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, oh gosh, why is that always the hardest question? <laughs> it should be so easy to answer by now. Um, so yeah, I am a romance writer. Um, I write uh, romantic comedies. Uh, in my day job, I am a wedding planner. So I am sort of surrounded by love stories at all times which is amazing and wonderful. And I just love it the most. Um, I live in Southern California, which right now is experiencing torrential rain, which is very strange, but (laughs) it's a thing that's happening. Um, I love Disney. I love Marvel. I love all the nerdy things. I love reading, obviously. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's it in a not very succinct nutshell. All right. So I had a question, like what led you to start writing romantic comedies? Like what was the, what was the writing journey story? You know? Yeah. I honestly have been writing romance novels. I should use air quotes for that. Um, since I was like a teenager, like Mm -hmm. I was writing these ridiculous, uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas fanfic stories, like way, way, way back in the day. That makes my age very obvious. Um, but I just like never really stopped. And I uh, started to think about doing it professionally, you know, not super long ago, probably seven or eight years ago. Um, and it has kind of been a journey from there. I started when I first sat down and was like, I'm going to write a real book. Um, I started actually writing like why a dystopian, totally weird. And it did not take me long to be like, no, this is not <laughs> where I need to be. And then I uh, very quickly shifted into uh, rom-coms from there. I love this. And I am about the same age. <laughs> so I understand <laughs> the fan fiction. I had the magazines. I had, I don't understand. Oh, like, yeah. oh, bro, it was not a good show. But no. Jonathan Thomas was just like very prominent in a teenage, you know. He just, there was something about him, man. He was magic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know. We can recapture that 30 years later. I know. <laughs> so true. It, is, it is so good. So um, were you a romance reader growing up or was it something that you're, you know, that came later in life? Yeah. So I definitely read a lot of, um, I guess, what at the time was sort of like YA romance. Um, YA has really come a long way in the last like 10 to 15 Mm -hmm. years. So when I was a teenager, it definitely was not what it is today. But I remember there was this series of books that was like Kiss and Tell or some ridiculous name like that, that I just like read every single one of those Um, I was really into the Sweet Valley books, so I read all of those. Um, And then I found when I got a little bit older, I I was like really the only reader in my family. And so I didn't really know how to bridge the gap between like YA and adults. And there was nobody to be like, here is this section that is just for you. (laughs) So I read a lot of like chiclet in like the 90s and the 2000s. And then when that sort of stopped being a thing, I was like, oh, wait, oh, hold on. There's this whole other section in this bookstore that is just for me. And so that Chiclet was sort of like my bridge into romance. And then once I discovered romance, I just went bananas and have never stopped. <laughs> so I'll just tell you, I read those love stories. I don't remember the names. I read them. Like that consumed them. Like the totally. like candy. It was so good. So Dude, good. Like, I was like, just my, my staple, like my, you know, every month there was a new issue that I would just yeah. read. It. But those love stories, I used to travel because I was in Puerto Rico. So I used to travel like every so often, my parents would take us to Florida, they'll take us to New York and they'll take us to, to the bookstore. And I'll just like buy them. 
people. By everyone, you, yes. <laughs> everyone, and just consumed them. And I too did not have, I was the only reader. My grandmother was a reader, but she was a Mr. Reader. And I was like, that's not in my area. She, yeah. she tried to teach me Murray Higgins Park. And I was like, yeah, no. Um, no. <laughs> so, so I actually went through checklist because I was like, I was in college. And I was like, well, that's what's available. Everyone was yeah. reading him, Jennifer Weiner and Emily yeah. Gibson and, you know, Jane Green and the London era. Jane Green yeah. and the London era, single, single lady in London. It was great. Yes. Yeah. Loved um, it. <laughs> and then, yeah, I think for me, romance came really late. I, I did go through the whatever was popular. So I did the fantasy dystopian, the, the YA dystopian, you know, era. That I, for sure. <laughs> you know, um, and so romance came in 2016 for me. I think it like, I, it was a prediction of what was 2016 going to look like. So I was like, yeah, we needed it then. <laughs> we needed that little like <laughs> popular actors, you know. For and, sure. But yeah, I... it's like it's a funny to say because I was like, I I'm you know I admire Gen Zers to have this white wide wide selection of like yeah every type of generate every type of like reader like representation diversity stuff to do like niches yeah. you know we what it. we had we had ghost writers writing you know yeah yeah <laughs> totally true um yeah and I like even now currently will read a lot of the current YA because it's just yeah. so good it's so yeah. good there's so much good stuff out there yeah. so I it's read like, all of them <laughs> so, good. so speaking of writing so let's talk about just my type what is elevator page um, so Just My Type is a second chance romance uh, about two high school sweethearts who are reunited um, 12 years after graduating from high school, and they find themselves competing for their dream job. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit, they're, they're somewhat enemies. There's a tone of enemies to lovers. There's a tone of second chance. There's a tone of, you know, there's also the idea you have to figure out who you are without a relationship mm-hmm. you know the magazine that they said it, it felt very like how to lose a guy in 10 days that kind of yes. like vibe of like you know let's work your story into this story yeah for sure yeah, yeah. I um, am a big fan of like all the 1990s 2000 rom-coms and so I definitely wanted to bring those vibes into this book and especially how to lose a guy in 10 days but really all of them just that the sort of the competition aspect of it um, was a lot of fun. And, you know, I love that they have these like layers to their relationship where there's everything that happened in the past and then what's happening with them in the present. And it was just a lot of fun to write. It was a lot of fun to see because it, it's set in LA, which is like a fun, like, I feel like there's not a lot of LA books and I'm grateful that your book and there's a couple more books and coming out there are LA based. Um, it gets a sense of like the setting, the stuff and the idea, like, you know, like it's, it doesn't have to be, it can be a big city romance, you know, yeah. um, cause a lot of romans are set in a small town where it's like idyllic and all stuff. I'm like, look, what about the big city girls, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, for sure. So, and there's also a conversation about like therapy and like taking care of yourself and stuff like that, which is, we don't see that enough in romance. We see a lot of it, like, you know, the person's going to fill up, going to fulfill us. It's going to make us happy. And I think you, this book brought up this idea, like you have to be happy yourself, you know, go to therapy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No. And I think um, just for me personally, I, if you're going to take one thing away from my books is like, therapy is amazing. (laughs) It's a great message. Um, and everybody should try it. Uh, (laughs) and, um, yeah, I do think there is that sort of notion that if you are going to be like ready to fully commit to a relationship, it's really important that you are a whole person and a healed person. Um, and that to me is sort of essential to, to having a relationship and having a functioning relationship. So therapy is amazing. (laughs) <laughs> it's a great tool as someone who's been in therapy for 20 plus years I think it's like it's like it's such a lifeline you know at times yes. it's like you know sometimes I've come back like this is what my therapist told me I need to do yeah <laughs> um, no you need it everybody needs it everybody needs it I think it's important and a lot of the a lot of the activities as I mentioned before I did a, I had a process where I was like trying to accept being single and I had a lot of tools like a lot of the things that 
your main character did, I did it myself. And I was like, it was because of therapy. Therapy was like, oh, you yeah. should go speed dating or you should do this. Or you should be a tourist in your, in your neighborhood, you yeah. know, experiment this. And it's like, it's a, so I hope that you, if you read it, and you're, even if you're in a relationship, like take some of those ideas and take some of those activities and be like, maybe I can try it myself and be comfortable with yourself, you know? Yeah, that's really important. And I think, um, yeah, even if you are in a relationship um, and you're in a healthy and functioning and wonderful relationship, um, therapy is still an amazing thing. Trying new things is always good. Um, and really remembering to just like take that time for yourself and, and be a person on your own. Um, that's always important too. Yeah. So awesome. Um, so let's chat some book recommendations. Do you have any books to recommend our listeners to pick up? Oh my gosh, so many, so many. And again, this is that question that as soon as you asked me, I'm like, have I read books ever? <laughs> um, <laughs> but so many. Um, I so recently I'm actually reading right now, which is a little bit of a tease because it doesn't come out for a couple more months. Um, but I am reading The Roommate Pact by Allison Ashley, who is just fabulous. Um, her first book, Would You Rather, came out last year. It's amazing. Uh, Allison writes like the best kisses I have ever read. They're just so, so good. And they just blow me away every time. Um, okay, what else have I been reading recently? Uh, Better Than Fiction by Alexa Martin. And Alexa was my Pitch Wars mentor way back in the day. Uh, and she is incredible. Um, I love books about bookish people, like books mm -hmm. set in the book world. Um, and this one is set in a bookstore. The hero is an author. So I just, I ate that one up. I loved that one. And let's see what else have I been reading that is amazing. Oh, well, I have to talk about In the Event of Love by Courtney K because first of all, I adore Courtney, but also just the book is just so, so good. Uh, it's like a Hallmark movie, but queer and super steamy. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes, it's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's like, even though it's a Christmassy feeling, you can read it all year round. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> awesome. Fallon, tell us who we can find you online. Um, so I am at Fallon Ballard everywhere. So it's F-A-L-O-N-B-A-L-L-A-R-D. Um, I'm on Twitter, not as much lately. I'm on Instagram a lot. I am on TikTok. I'm very bad at it, but it I am good. there. <laughs> it is all good. Thank you, Fallon, for being on the show. All right. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatreadnextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading into your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Read Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libro FM for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code What to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the US. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.